Are you looking to set up a Zoom meeting and not exactly sure where to do that in your settings? Well, today I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to schedule a Zoom meeting and talk through a couple of the check boxes you wanna make sure are checked on the back end before you send out the link. Before we jump into it, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and I do want to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. If you enjoy more free content, I am the co-host of the Better Events Podcast. Give it a listen wherever you listen to podcasts. I host it with fellow event pro Mary Davidson, and we drop new episodes every single Wednesday, and it's all about everything from run of shows to how to plan a uh, nonprofit fundraiser to how to build your business. What legal resources do you need? We have guests on there. It's a great time. So give it a listen. But without further ado, let's jump into talking about Zoom meeting. Now, you might be someone who is a Zoom expert and that's great for you. Maybe this video isn't for you. But if you were someone who has ever thought you set your meeting up correctly and then something happened weird while you were in it or all of a sudden you didn't want to have a password, but you'd set a password or just something was off. I'm gonna walk you step by step how to do it here in Zoom on the back end. So here I am, whenever I say Zoom back end, I'm always meaning like zoom.com. If you just type in zoom.com, it will auto correct it to zoom.us because I'm in the US. And you wanna go to your profile page and you can go to your meetings. Another option is you can always go to schedule, that also takes you to this meeting. But here you can go to schedule a meeting and then it'll come up with letting you name your meeting, my topic, again, letting you know that this is visible to anyone who's attending your meeting or event. So this is where you might put the title of your meeting or your event. You can add a description, again, visible to attendees. You can set your time for when it starts, your duration, what time zone you're in. If you want it to be reoccurring, maybe it's a, like I always do this when I have a production team meeting that's just gonna be weekly and I don't want the essentially the Zoom link to change. You can click and make it reoccurring. If you click reoccurring, um, it will let you ask you to do daily, weekly, monthly, or you can just say no fixed time. And this then just takes away that whole date and time feature, or you could do it if you're doing something like an all hands or something like that. Registration, this is where you can check that and enable registration, meaning if you want them to give you their name, their email, and a number of other fields that you can customize and figure out, but you do have to make sure it is checked here if you want that. I'm gonna leave it checked so you guys can see what happens after I hit save. Uh, meeting ID, again, generate automatically. This is nice for security reasons, or you can use your personal meeting ID. I know some folks who use their personal Zoom kind of room like their room, so as the, as the host, I just have to open my personal meeting room. I don't have to find a new link, but I often just generate automatically. And then you can actually start to save templates, which is a pretty cool feature. And then here's security, one of Zoom's favorites. And so they'll have a passcode, which you can customize, or it can be randomly generated. You can have a waiting room, meaning that folks can't join the meeting until you let them in, or you can have them require authentication. Now, one of the things is if you actually uncheck all three options, you'll see here in red, you must select at least one option. So this is something that Zoom has set up for your security of your meeting or your event that you're hosting in Zoom meeting. And so you do have to have one of these features. And so sometimes I'll have clients who are like, we really don't want a passcode. Make sure you then you have a waiting room. I usually default to the waiting room is the easiest one out of all of them. If I have a client who wants something a little more secure, we'll do passcode and waiting room. And then the only time I really use this third option of require authentication to join has been like I uh, run a volunteer group and sometimes I can't make the meeting. And so if I do this last option, it will ask folks to make sure they're signed into their Zoom account to join. It's sometimes an extra step the first time you do this at, an, at a meeting, but it does enable it that folks can join your call before you do as the host, or if I don't join at all, they can still have a call. So that's why I would use that last one, but often I'll just do waiting room or waiting room and passcode. And then video here, you can control if you want as a default setting for all your host and your participants, cameras to be on or off, audio, letting people join from their telephones or computer audio or both. I often do both and I leave this both as on because again, these are controls, uh, at least for the video portion that you can control once you've started the Zoom meeting. If you change your mind and you don't want attendees on screen, you can totally change it later. Um, and then the audio, I just really enjoy letting people join however they can because we've all had connectivity issues before. Then here's a couple more options you have. You can allow participants to join anytime, so you could check that one. Uh, mute a participants upon entry, again, something you control once you get into your meeting if you want. You can pre-assign breakout rooms, which is where you can create a room and they'll have you import a CSV file. You can also use their formatting on their CSV file. 
I haven't found that this has worked that well just because a lot of folks register with one email and then have a Zoom account with a different email and Zoom does not know to match those two people together, but it is an option to sort large groups of people a little bit faster than you would manually. And then requesting permission to unmute participants. So it'll pop up asking people if I can unmute them. Automatically record meeting. You can automatically have it start the minute you hit start meeting though, that's when it's gonna start recording. This is great if you need that extra nudge to remember to record, but I would recommend if you're doing any kind of tech check or preset before your meeting or your event starts, that if you have this enabled, you immediately pause it before you actually say anything so that's not captured in the recording. And then enable focus mode. This is a newer feature. You might not see this if you haven't updated your Zoom. I'll link to my video about how you should update your Zoom all the time, both above and below in the show notes. And you can, this just hides other people's uh, profile pictures and makes it so that they're just focusing on the speaker or the person who's speaking and their slides. It's kind of a cool feature if you're doing kind of a webinar, uh, lecture style kind of event or meeting. And then approve or block entry to users. So this is another like security feature. I haven't really used this that much with my clients, but this is someone if you are prone to having people either Zoom bomb your event or maybe you're talking about something that's proprietary and you only want people in certain countries to be able to view your content, you can allow, you can do either allow only from like the US or block from and then list the countries you want to block. And then lastly, you have your alternative hosts. So this is a kicker because it's not really an alternative host as like anyone who has a Zoom account. Alternative hosts can only be people who are a part of your account. So if you have an account with Zoom and you have multiple users, then you could list them as alternative hosts. So this really applies if you work for a company or a larger organization that has multiple Zoom licenses. I don't use it as much because I'm a solopreneur and I'll often utilize other folks on my team for events, but we all have our own individual Zoom accounts. Now, once you're happy with all of those settings, you hit save and now you will see it as the option to start your meeting. You can add it to your calendar. You'll see everything that we already talked about. You can copy your registration link specifically because again, we remember we checked, we want people to register. And then down here at the bottom is where you can actually edit your registration settings. So this will let you view how many folks have registered for your event, where you can either cancel a reservation, you can send them a confirmation email. Registration op options, you can make it so it's automatically approved, meaning if I hit put my information in and I hit register, I'm automatically allowed to come to your event. Or maybe you're having something that's members only, so then you wanna manually approve. Um, you can send an email to yourself every time someone registers. Great for a small group. I would not recommend this for hundreds of people because you'll get lots of emails. Um, you can control when the registration closes. You can restrict how many people are in your meeting. If you check that, it's gonna ask for a number. You can let people join from multiple devices like their phone and their desktop, and then social sharing buttons on your registration page. Here's where I mentioned you can actually control the number, what questions that people are seeing. Default, they usually ask for just your, uh, it says first name and email is always required, but they also ask for last name or you can check that you want their address as well. And so you can control what you want them to answer and if it's required for them to move forward. And then lastly, it does have the option for you to create your own, your own questions. I think this is really nice because you really can customize it for what you want it to be as a part of your registration process, but just know you can't edit that until you have created the meeting. And then email settings, you can edit all of these. This is my email address. You can also uh, send a preview email if you want to see what your confirmation email looks like to attendees. You also have the option to do some branding, so you can put your logo for a banner, lo a banner invitation or a logo um, if you just want your colors and your look and feel of your event. Here's where you can upload your polls and quizzes. So polls, I haven't played around as much with the advanced polling and quizzes feature, but um, I will be looking into that a little bit more. But polling, this is where you wanna enter it in. And then lastly, live streaming. So this is where you wanna make sure that if you um, are streaming to maybe a custom live streaming service, you wanna configure this in the back end. So this is where you'd want your stream URL, your stream key, and uh, where you're streaming to. But yeah, so those are all the settings for what you need to do before you can set up your meeting. Again, some of these are changeable once you hit start your meeting, but it's always good to double and triple check. 
That's all I have for you folks. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and this has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning and running your own business. If you wanna learn more about what I do, please visit loganstrategygroup.com or follow me on social media, loganstrategygroup underscore events, and I'll be back in your feeds again next week. Bye.